Hello, how are you doing today? My name is Lynn and today I thought I would make a traveler's notebook. I picked up this, I, I don't think I have the full collection. It was a bundle though that I got off of Craft Stash and it's by Helen Griffin of Simply Made Crafts. And in the bundle I got the full-size traveler's notebook, which is what I'll be making today. And then I also got the smaller size um, traveler's notebook, which I think is ideal for A6 size notebooks. So I'll craft with that one next. But I wanted to put this size together for a crafty friend of mine who uh, tried to call dibs on... <laughs> <laughs> on the Let It Be uh, Traveler's Notebook that I made a cover for. So I thought I would make one for her because, uh, well, that, that Let It Be one is, I'm keeping that one. <laughs> so this uh, Traveler's Notebook, really in general, not, not specific to this one, but Traveler's Notebooks are pretty easy to put together. And so what's fun is just all of the decorating you can do. Now this die, it will put in the score lines for you. I'm just reinforcing those score lines because I've die cut this out of 100 pound heavyweight cardstock. This is cardstock from Spellbinders. On the cover here, there's actually two score lines that are about an eighth an inch apart from one another. And that just gives you a little bit of extra, extra roundness, extra thickness if you need it. And the idea is that the die will cut out your covers. So this will be for both your front cover and your back cover, as well as the spine. And with the spine, um, I don't think in Helen's tutorials she explicitly mentions this, but but she might. Um, in a lot of um, in a lot of Eileen Hall uh, scoreboards dies, a lot of times what she'll say in terms of how to construct her uh, albums that are in the same style uh, as a traveler's notebook is that you can actually adjust the width of the spine if you want in a few in a few different ways you can do what i'm doing where you just overlap the whole thing and so you just line up all three holes from one cover piece with all three holes from the other cover piece and that might be the simplest uh, option. You could, if you wanted, uh, just overlap two of the holes or even just one hole. And that gives you a, a, a wider, thicker notebook and more opportunities or more notebooks that you can hold within. So that's always an option. If you want something more narrow, you can always trim off some of the spine, uh, maybe trim off one hole from each of your uh, cover pieces, and that would just leave you two holes uh, for which to do your binding, and then you'll be able to um, you know, string that and, and hold fewer notebooks for a thinner uh, spine. So lots of different options. I'm sticking to I'm sticking to the basic here, and I've already put the the notebook in the mail. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna cut down my pattern paper. So this sheet I'll cut to eight and three eighths of an inch. So that's um, shy of the height of the journal, which is eight and five eighths. And then I um, am going to cut it down so that it um, fits with a little bit of a border all the way around, about one eighth inch border all the way around. And I'm going to round the corners. So this die set, it doesn't come with the dies that will cut out your mats and layers, but it's a fairly simple shape um, book because it is just a rectangular piece. Um, the only thing you'll have to do is round the corners if you if you want it to match. So um, hopefully that's that's a supply or a tool that you'll have in your craft stash to to be able to um, 
get your mats and layers. If not, you could always just trace the the rounded corner of your cover onto your pattern paper and and that could be another way to to get a rounded corner by just hand cutting that the um and then i'm just going to use some um, double-sided adhesive tape all along all four edges to um attach this to our cover and i do want this to be nice and permanent so I just did a little squiggle of liquid adhesive in the center and um, and then I'll go ahead and apply that to my uh, front cover and to the back cover. I did, it really isn't um, super noticeable uh, given how I finished this and there I forgot actually to put the liquid adhesive but this is, that's going to be the back cover. Um, but uh, I will end up using a little bit of fabric paper to reinforce the spine a little bit, but also really just to uh, finish up the spine because just my personal aesthetic, I don't like to see the um, the elastic on the spine. And I like that sort of leather bound look of um, having that that extra bit of the spine uh, coming across the front and the back covers. So I'm gonna cut the exact same uh, pattern papers here. So I've got four and a quarter inch wide by eight and three eighths of an inch tall. Those are the exact same matte layers as the front and back cover. The papers I'm using are actually from Simply Made Crafts of um, the same collection because it, it did come in that bundle that I got and so the papers just are just really gorgeous and they are a really nice thickness too I I was really impressed by them so really nice they're gonna add they're gonna add some um, uh, some structure to the cover pieces, especially lining the front and back with them. It's going to feel, it's going to feel nice and substantial, even though I'm, I'm not using a mat board or chipboard as my base because I don't want it to be too thick, these covers. So I thought just the heavyweight card stock, 100 pound card stock would be, um, plenty thick especially combined with these pattern papers, which are, which are not a paper. They are really nice, uh, lightweight cardstock. So really, really lovely. And they are, as you might have already, um, guessed, they are single-sided because they are white on the back and white core as well. So, so really, really lovely patterns. Um, the other die sets that came in the bundle, well, in this in this die set that has your main die to, to cut your cover pieces, there are a couple of other dies in there. There's a pocket die, um, a label die, and I think one or two others. But as part of the collection, there's also the um, pocket and I think accessories. I'm not sure the exact name, but if it's still if it's also available, I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. But in um, this companion die set, there are two, two uh, styles of pockets, and actually, as it turns out, you can get you can get both of them cut on a twelve inch length of paper, and the twelve by twelve paper pad that's part of this collection, um, it's just gorgeous. There's lots of striking colors in the black and white, lots of florals. And um, so even though there's, I'm using a lot of pinks here because um, my Crafty Friends logo has some pinks and some florals in it. So I thought this would be a nice reminder of her um, Crafty logo. And uh, as well, the paper pad includes some really striking black and white prints, even a news newspaper sort of print, and some really lovely blues as well. So I've cut both style of pockets because one of them is more suited for your front cover 
just because of how uh, where the score lines are put in place. However, if you if you don't care about having that nice professional cut edge always being um, uh, in front, you could always die cut from the back of your paper and then reverse the the fold lines and uh, and you should be able to kind of get the mirror of that pocket. This pocket style with the slits, it can work, you know, on either the left um, inside front cover or the inside back cover. So this one is a little bit more versatile. The way this pocket works though is interesting because it does have those additional slits. So essentially what that allows you to do is put things into your pocket that are maybe a little bit shorter because everything's going to fall through to the bottom of the pocket. So um, so the the entire pocket is open to the bottom, but it's just those slits allow you to put shorter things and that way they don't actually get lost. You can put them, feed them through from those slots. And so, um, so that's really a neat um, style of pocket. I did um, fold in all the glue tabs and then I rounded that corner um, so that this can sort of match with the uh, the corner of the cover of our Traveler's Notebook. And I am inking away all of that white core that's showing. Now, I wish I had done this differently because I didn't know how the other one, the other pocket would look. And if I had put the uh, other pocket onto uh, the front cover first, I would have known this. But had I to do it over again, I would have actually put this pocket flush to the bottom. This pocket, as it turns out, I think is a little bit more narrow than the other style of pocket. And so the reason why I didn't put it flush all the way to the bottom is because it it can have a little bit of a border all the way around. So I was actually lining it up with the pattern paper as opposed to the edge of the, um, the bottom edge of the cover. So I think I would have preferred uh, to actually put that flush all the way to the bottom because when I went to attach this pocket, and this is more of a side uh, loading pocket, where you have the glue tabs just on the bottom and the left edge. Well, this one, it's it's a little bit wider. So since there's no um, way for you to attach this so that there's any of a border left and right, I that's why I decided to, to attach this one flush, flush to the bottom. Um, I really should have just matched them up. <laughs> <laughs> so that they were consistent, but I think this looked a little bit better being um, attached all the way at the bottom. And how I like to apply or attach these pockets is actually to, uh, you can see me debating it <laughs> here. Uh, so how I decided, uh, how I like to uh, attach my pockets is I, I just run some scotch tape along the bottom glue tab and the reason why I do that is it's less about securing the pocket and more about leveling off that that little um, glue tab so that when you stick things into your pocket whatever you're sticking sticking down into the pocket will glide right over that extra thickness of um, paper and it will actually go all the way to the bottom of your of your pocket. One of the things that is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine is when I stick something into a, a pocket, but it, it keeps getting caught on the um, on that little glue tab, and it won't go all the way down to the bottom. And so, just running that little bit of scotch tape will smooth out the transition so that things don't get caught on that on that lip. And the nice thing about this die set is that it does have the dies that will cut mats and layers. So I cut one, um, I just cut the, the mat for one of the, um, pockets. You could, you could mat 
all three sections of of that style of pocket and on the front pocket that paper is just so pretty i didn't want it does have a matte layer die i just didn't want to cover up that paper so <laughs> so i left that one uh as it was and uh and for the same reason i didn't want to cover up all of that paper on the back pocket either but i just thought it might um benefit from just a little bit of pattern there and to attach your two front and back covers, you just uh, glue and overlap the spine piece. So I I did use a combination of my really strong score tape and some liquid adhesive as well. And there is a die in the main Traveler's Notebook die set. So I think it's one of the five dies that, that comes included. And you can, if you want, use a die to to die cut out this hole it's just a single die that all it does is cut out uh, a little hole i'm just going i'm using my big bite to um punch a three sixteenths of an inch hole and i love the big bite because it does have um the ability to punch and to set eyelids or um grommets and also you can punch those eyelets holes and, and grommets or set the eyelets and grommets um, in the center of your paper because it does have that sort of um, that that wide throat that you can recess your paper into. So really, really handy. I mean, it's a pricey tool, but it's really, really handy. And and I find it more and more uh, useful. Um and so, so I have, you know, no regrets getting it. It's, it's become, um, a favorite tool of mine. So here I've got some, it's, it goes by a couple of different names. Um, this one that I'm using specifically is actually from Craft Text. I think they call it paper leather. No, they call it fabric paper. Sizzix used to call it paper leather. They now call theirs, um, uh, they call theirs, I forget what they call theirs now. Um, I just used it too. And I think it's also, it also goes by, um, vegan leather. Uh, that's another name for it. So, um, lots and lots of different, uh, oh, texture roll is what Sizzix calls theirs. Lots of different names for it. Um, but essentially what it is, is it's still a paper product, but it's very durable. It's water uh, resistant. You can wash it. You can crumple it. You can dry emboss it. You can color it, ink over it. You can do whatever, quite a lot to it. And um, it's wonderful because it's so durable. And what I'm going to do to to further, you know, add durability to this traveler's notebook is line these two folds uh, where the front and back covers are with a material called Tyvek. I buy them in these 10 inch wristbands. And I know that this looks kind of messy and, um, and not very attractive because I'm actually uh, adding this to the outside cover. And the reason I'm adding this to the outside cover is because it would not have been completely covered uh, had I placed it on the inside front cover. So knowing that I'm going to wrap this spine with the paper leather, uh, you can peek down inside there but and possibly still see it, but for the most part, these Tyvek strips are going to be uh, completely covered by that. So... And that's why I've chosen to to line it on the outside, which is rare for me. But but knowing where I was headed, uh, this actually works out better. I am actually going to act set grommets in these um, holes because these are actually wider holes than the ones that were part of the pocket traveler's notebook that I made earlier from the. I think it was the Biggs um, die. And these are actually designed so that you can set a, a standard size eyelet or grommet. My understanding of the difference between the two is that your, your um, eyelet does not have a washer behind it and a grommet does. 
So, so my um, pieces here do come, it's two parts. So there's the, there's the pretty part, which would be your eyelet. And then there's the little washer, the little bit of metal that it just makes it a little bit more finished, you know, and reinforces the paper from the backside a little bit. And I'm using, again, my uh, Big Bite to set these. And if you if you have um, this the Big Bite tool, there are lots of different settings on the tool for the top and bottom plate. And so you just need to look up what style and size of eyelet versus grommet. Um, I think it will do your 3 sixteenths of an inch eyelets as well as your smaller um, eyelets as well. And so the settings will depend on all of that. You just want to make sure you get those um, set right so that everything um, will will uh, be correct when when it actually goes down to clamp it. And the reason to, to add these is to reinforce those holes so that as you put notebooks in and out and stretch this elastic cording, the, those holes don't continue to expand or tear. Um, and so having that bit of metal there helps to, to, um, improve the, the durability of this. And then when you do your binding, what you want to do is, um, I use two millimeter elastic cording and you just want to pick a hole on one end. Uh, I like to start from the outside. When you're on the inside, you want to go top to bottom. When you're on the outside, you want to go, you know, back cover to right cover or back cover to front cover or vice versa, depending on where you started, so that you have the long lines of elastic cording on the inside and you have the short lines of elastic cording just along the top and bottom on the outside. And then you want to bring your last the ends, you want to bring the ends of your elastic cording back to center. And you'll actually end up, if you're using three holes like I am here, you'll actually end up with four bands of cording, which means technically you can use, uh, put four notebooks in here. Now I tried to use my little metal clips, but these 3 sixteenths an inch of a hole, they're too big for these clips because um, if, if it's jostled, you know, just in the right uh, way, it can actually uh, slide right through that hole. So, so I'm going to have to um, attach my, my um, elastic cording that will be used as a closure uh, the, the old fashioned way, I guess, of, of just tying it, tying it in a knot. And so um, all you need to do here is just guesstimate a little bit how, how long of a stretch you'll need. And it's a little bit tough because when, when you're first making your notebook, it, it might not be completely filled with everything that might ultimately go in there, which could uh, make, make the traveler's notebook a little bit more chunky over time. So don't, don't stretch this so that it's too tight. Um, because if it's so tight that it's even pinching, already pinching in on the covers, even, um, brand new like this, then you haven't really given it enough, um, enough space to kind of grow and, and get chunky over time. So, so that's the medium, you know, that's the, the balance that you're trying to strike is you want it to still be tight and, and not loosey goosey, but at the same time, you don't, um, you don't want to have it, uh, too tight to where there's no room to expand. So through my paper leather, I'm going to, um, you saw me kind of line up that hole that way I can, um, I just punched and I punched a smaller hole. 
I punched a 1 8 inch hole as opposed to the 3 16 inch hole because this hole is going to be visible. So I'd rather, even though it's going to be tough for me to feed my elastic cording through that hole, because I have to, you'll see me struggle with that in a little bit. <laughs> um, but it's, it's well worth it. I only have to do it the one time. Um, but it's going to ultimately end up with a nicer finish because that way you don't actually see the larger hole underneath and you don't see the, um, the eyelet and, or the grommet that I used. And so what I've done is I've lined the edge of my paper leather with some strong, uh, score tape and I've lined the edge of the front and back cover the edge that butts up against the spine where it's folded. I've lined that with double-sided um, score tape as well. And then I'm going to squiggle on some liquid adhesive, um, kind of gauging, estimating um, in between. But the idea is that by putting strong score tape on the edges of both the cover and of my paper leather, it hopefully um, creates a nice a nice seal on those outside edges where, especially with the paper leather, I mean, that's where it might get um, uh, caught on something, for example. I don't want any lifting there, so getting adhesive all the way as close to the edge as possible is... Um, is nice and uh, having that bit of liquid adhesive will will ensure that this is a nice permanent permanent bond. And you can see I'm having a hard time feeding both um, uh, ends <laughs> of my elastic band through and and you'll see in a little bit uh, the little bit of MacGyvering I end up doing um, to to make this easy on myself in a little bit. Uh, I did try going from the outside in, so from small hole to um, th through to the larger hole, that didn't work. I tried going from the inside out, that didn't work. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to cut a little bit of thread and I'm going to use this to feed through because this thread is smaller and should make it its way through the holes easier. But this thread is also a little bit flimsy, so I'm going to tape the ends of this thread. So it's as if it's, uh, you know, the little plastic ends of your shoelace. That way I have something stiff that I can s feed through <laughs> the hole. And that worked perfectly. So if you ever need to do this, um, you know, don't hesitate to use these thicker the two millimeter elastic cording. I like the thicker stuff because I feel like, especially for this size uh, notebook, the traveler size notebook, um, it's it's sturdier. I feel and it um, and it feels a little bit more substantial and it feels like you don't have to be overly precious, you know, with it. And so I just overall prefer this. I originally bought one one millimeter cording for this, um, these types of projects and I don't, I just don't like it as much. So my final little, um, touch here is a little charm that I've put on a little jump ring and a lobster, uh, clasp. So when, when my friend's done with this, if she doesn't want to continue to kind of refill notebooks, um, she can always take this charm off and, and clip it onto something else if she wants to keep that. So that, that keeps it nice and, uh, removable and, and very easily removable because it's just a lobster claw. So or a lobster clasp. But this is the the finished traveler size notebook. So front uh, cover has a pocket. Got three notebooks with room for a fourth if she wants to add a fourth. And these are standard size traveler's notebooks. And the back has this um, cool style of pocket. I like the style of pocket with these slits so that you can you can put you can put um, shorter things and it, it won't get lost in that pocket. So that completes my project for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.